Hello everyone, welcome to another Green Dragons Gaming Club. Without us, they wouldn't feel like winners. Without them, we could look so good. So, uh, let's see. So I'm still continuing my battle reports and trying to uh, bang them out as quickly as I can. Um, and let's see. So, uh, again, well, we're also out in Westchester, Pennsylvania. So out in that area, definitely uh, reach out to us. Uh, so this is, again, another Ninth Age battle report. And this, I went out to Milwaukee, and Jeff turned around, and uh, he, I gotta say, had a blast, an absolute blast out there. It's my first time traveling that far um, uh, with my models, I should say, uh, for a um, for a tournament. Um, and I won't lie, they all didn't make it back in one piece, but you know what, uh, it was worth it. I had such a blast. So this is game three, so this is now uh, the last game of day one. I am sitting currently at, uh, let's see, I had 16 plus eight, so um, 24 points right now. So I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. I had 24 points after two games. I uh, wish it was higher, but at the same time, you know, it is what it is. And I am going to be playing another Highborn Elf player. Uh, so let's see. I got to say, Mark has a beautifully painted army. He is one of the most fun players you will ever play against. Um, and I, I had fun with this game. I really did. Uh, here's his army list. Uh, so I will say I this is not a list I personally would be playing with. I probably would get taken in a different way. Um, but it's one that he, I guess he's been using it for some time because someone else told me he took the same thing to Michigan GT. And you know what? Um, obviously, it's done well for him up to this point because he's sitting at 24 points. Uh, I'm sitting at 24, so it's above, um, it's above 20, so you're on the right side of 50%. And that's it. Uh... Now, one couple things that I'm concerned with uh, with um, going against him is the Sea Guard. Uh, are they going to shoot off uh, my knights? Are they going to shoot off my characters? Uh, the spears, charging the spears, especially with cavalry, is just hard because it's um, he's going to he's only strength three, but he's winning me on fours. But now he's got additional AP. He's definitely going to go first, even above my ground knights. It's not a pretty picture. Um, the commander uh, with a royal huntsman on a chariot. I don't. Or I mean, I don't want that thing charging into me. At the same time, it. I mean, it can just do too many wounds to a lance. That if he throws it in with one of the units of spears, then I actually have an issue. Uh, a dragon's a dragon, and that's it. Um, Look, the Lion Guard and the Sword Masters both have the capability of taking out my my knights um, even before I get a chance. So it, it, there is strength here. There absolutely is strength to this list that as a KOE player, I'm sitting there going, all right, how am I going to deal with some of these things? Um, here's my list. Um, feel free, flip through it. Let me know if you have any questions. So here's how we deployed. Uh, we are playing um, capture the flag and encircle. So this is uh, the picture after movement. Uh, I chose. Yeah, I thought I chose to go. I chose to go first. OK, so we dropped. I chose to go first. Um, I don't recall if I prayed or not. I don't believe I prayed. Um, with this army design, I really don't have to pray. Um, and I think the reason why I did chose not to pray is it doesn't get me that much. One unit benefits from it. That's it. The rest don't. Um, and a couple things here. One is he's got a bolt thrower there in the ruins. He's got the other bolt thrower there. And even though my Duke is in uh, the field, it does not benefit co from cover. From the field because it has towering presence his dragon is hidden from my bolt throwers but the chariot is not the chariot does have cover and that's that and here's um 
during my turn, I think I put two wounds onto one of his bolt throwers, and that was it. Otherwise, I had simply uh, moved everything up. So during his turn, he chats up my grails, and he moves forward with um, with his spears. I, th I think I killed a couple of spears with a crossbowman, too. And that was really it. And he took his dragon out from behind a building. And I'm not sure if that was a smart move or not, uh, because now it's got target tattooed all across it for uh, my bolt throwers, for my two scorpions. Um, magic, he or uh, shooting, I think he killed one knight of the aspirants. He does manage to put up, I believe, that spell this turn that forces you to do it uh, to minimize on a unit you put down on the aspirants. And let's see. No, he did not put down the aspirants. Um, this is literally ha how uh, it looks at the start of my turn. Um, again, it just was uneventful for the first few rounds. Uh, yeah. Am I going the wrong way? Yeah, I'm going the wrong way. All right, I apologize. So here I'm going to end up charging. That's what this is. This is a picture of the charge. I end up charging the um, the chaff, and that was it. I didn't want to get into the spears yet, because if I got into the first brick of spears, he's got an easy flank. If I got into this, um, the other brick of spears, it, it's, again, um, the line guard and the sword masters are two units I just don't want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, with a single unit. Um, and this turn, he turns around and gets uh, that one spell that is uh, a two minimize. So they're rolling now five dice, dropping the lowest and dropping the two highest. Uh, during my turn, I go ahead and I declare a charge into the Brick of Spears straight ahead. And I rolled a single one, which I drop, and four sixes. And I just look down, and I need 11 on dice, I think. I just look down and shrug, I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, they shouldn't have made it. It was, it, you know, they got the reroll, so why not give it a whirl? And it paid off. So they go into that combat. Uh, I chaff up. Um, let me just go back. I'm going the wrong way again. I apologize. Um, I do charge the spears uh, Next to the ruins, I also charge the spears uh, in front of the water because, again, I may not be steadfast in water, but I should be able to take that with uh, the units of the Knights of the Realm, especially if I get any buffs up. And the other reason why I did this is I managed, um, and you'll see, so there's the four dice. You can see in this picture right here, I managed to go ahead and chaff up the Lion Guard. So I'm like, all right, you know what? They're chaff, the dragon's out out in the wind. He's too really he's really too far for me to care about his spells, which was a misplay on his part. We talked about that a little bit later. And that's it. So here are the charges. There's that charge. Um, I cast a spell, managed to get that other knight put back on there. He kills four knights. I kill a bunch of him. He's steadfast. Um Let's see. The um, both brick and knights turn around and take out what they need to take out. The there was fleeing going on, so the other unit of the swordmasters end up fleeing off the road from the spears that uh, broke in combat within six inches. So the grails that would have been going in, um, and I think I had a buff up on them too. They would have been going in. They're, they had the buff and would have been striking at the same agility, although hitting on fours, winning on twos. Unfortunately, his unit broke uh, from panic, fled off the board. Nothing else stuck around. I managed to put a single wound earlier on that lion chariot, and that's it. Uh, meanwhile, my duke uh, ends up going into the bolt thrower. This is like turn three or turn four, and you can only imagine what's going to happen. Um... The one unit of spears 
that's there gets uh, charged by the uh, Peasant Crusaders. I didn't really care about the Lion Guard getting into the Knights of the Realm. They were too far for a good charge, and I'm hoping still to have the Crusaders there. Like the Spears run off, and then the Crusaders uh, turn around and hold and um, try to redirect um, the Lion Guard. Over here, uh, he it's nothing but a whiff fest. He's doing nothing to me. I'm killing a couple of his. Uh, he charged in his lion chariot into the brick of ground knights, and I got one yeoman, just one yeoman, onto that uh, bolt thrower. Um, there's and there's that other combat, which was a charge flank, big flank. I actually, for their price, I'm really beginning to like the peasant crusaders because the reroll charge range, just for this very purpose to uh, try to get you uh, ranks in a flank. Uh, needless to say, nothing really held. Um, eventually the chariot does get eaten by my duke up the top. I'm sorry for a um, uh, couple of the missed picks. It's because this was really a time crunch game. Uh, two and a half hours uh, trying to go ahead and get the... Uh, the game done all six turns. That was rough. I think we are actually finished a, a turn short. Uh, I did go ahead and manage to put uh, a couple wounds on that dragon earlier. The dragon charged and broke the unit of peasants that were there. And or oh, he charged in with Lion Guard. I really don't. I think I want to go into the Lion Guard. I forget if he has character in that unit that makes him stubborn or not. But it's just, uh, just can end up being a nasty, nasty unit. And let's see. That's that. Uh, at this point in time, I think pretty sure a game gets called. As you can see, his entire back line is uh, eaten. All the spears are gone. Uh, with the exception of one unit that's got like four running across the board. Uh, my Duke is still alive. My Knights of the uh, Knight Aspirants finally win. I've, I'm all lined up for that other unit uh, to get hit on the flank. Uh, again, I don't recall if there's a character in that or not. And the question is, is does the dragon live? So we just dice rolled it out because um, it was my turn. And sure enough, dragon died. So ends up being a total 20-0 20, uh, 20 victory uh, to me. He definitely had some misplays here. I'm just going to go back to the first pick here. Uh, so this was not a bad idea, putting his dragon behind the building, knowing where my uh, scorpions were. But what he did is, as he swung out all the way out, he starts going like this and then like that. Well, the problem is, is his range of his magic is 18 to 24 inches. He's outside range for where he wants his spells to be. He's got like Miletus. And I hate that spell, but he's got Miletus. Um, he has um, a couple a couple other good combat spells. But again, everything was out. And I just, because he maneuvered his character in such a way, I just didn't care. I'm not sure how I feel about the mage on a fighting dragon. I'll have to give it more thought. I just think that it's more of a liability because you don't want to throw your mage in there because you don't want to lose him in the combat. At the same time, hey, he'd actually be useful. Yeah, I, got, I, I have to give it some more thought on that. Um, what broke the, the camel's back was from looking at this picture. Well, first off, the, four di the 46 out of 5 dice getting 6s on that charge into the spears. And the panic test with the, what were they? The uh, sword masters, and I just use I I use my chaff better than he did. Um, and yeah, that's it. So any questions or concerns, definitely feel uh, feel free to reach out to me. I'll uh, and I'll answer as soon as I can. And until next time, happy gaming.